I tell you, it was uh, uh, earlier this fall when um, I got contacted by my good friends at the city of St. Paul, and they said, by golly, there's a lot of good things happening at, with nonprofits across the city, and uh, they should know about these resources and opportunities related to the Inflation Reduction Act. And the more we got talking, the more we thought, well, gosh, let's just broaden this uh, to uh, nonprofits across the state. And so that's exactly what we, what we did. And so I want to thank um, the city of St. Paul and the great team um, in our capital city for helping put this together, along with some nonprofit partners like CEE and Propel Nonprofits and, and Interchange. Uh, great organizations that helped get the word out today about today's webinar. Um, so without further ado, I will move full steam ahead. And the first thing I want to mention is uh, regarding the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, gosh, I think the, the ink was hardly dry. Uh, on the legislation when we started at the clean energy resource team, started getting phone calls and emails from groups all across the state, farmers, businesses, nonprofits, cities, county schools. And they're like, what is this all about? We need to know more information and we need to get it out to our clients, our customers, our residents. And uh, we thought, well, we can do that clean energy resource teams. And we have given dozens of presentations over the last few months, but we also created this IRA ambassadors program. It's a, like a train the trainer model. And you can go online, sign up to be an ambassador. And by doing that, you have access to a set of tools to help get the word out uh, to your residents, to your clients, customers, et cetera. And that includes uh, a template, slide decks that you can customize, uh, handouts, scripts that go along with those, those uh, slide decks. We have some recorded presentations, um, some that are uh, cover the full breadth of the Inflation Reduction Act, hour long presentations, as well as short presentations, maybe four to eight minutes or so about each slice of the IRA. And uh, and then as you if you sign up to be an ambassador, then you can also sign up to receive regular email updates about the IRA. And these are like once every couple of weeks, maybe once every three weeks, really whenever there's um, relevant information, new information about the IRA, you'll be the first to know um, so you can you can sign up to be an IRA ambassador. Just uh, go to the Clean Energy Resource Team's homepage, and you'll find a link um, on how to do that. So, you know, since we've started this, uh, we have more than eight hundred people that have signed up to be IRA ambassadors, um, which is fantastic, and we need more. So uh, here are a few things I'm going to cover in the next 25 minutes or so. Just give a broad overview of the IRA. Uh, going to uh, uh, point you towards some uh, resources uh, through Interchange and through Excel's uh, nonprofit program. Going to talk about uh, the IRA as it relates to energy efficiency, something called the 179D program. Going to talk about electric vehicles, renewables. Um, and this new uh, initiative, this new program, uh, thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act called Direct Pay that Anna mentioned. Uh, Going to uh, touch on some other uh, financing tools and then turn it over to Kristen Funk from the Center for Energy and Environment, um, who will talk about their amazing programs and initiatives. But before I launch too much into that, uh, Clean Energy Resource Team, some of you may be familiar with CERTS, the work we do, but some uh, may be new. 
two certs, and we've been around for 20 years. This is our 20th year, two decades of helping Minnesotans do clean energy projects. Uh, uh, and uh, that could be farmers, businesses, cities, counties, schools, faith communities, you name it. If you want to be more energy efficient or utilize renewables and just need some assistance in um, getting from A to B, then CERTS is a great resource to turn to. We also do a lot of good storytelling. So if you're out there and you're, you're a nonprofit, you, you uh, do a fantastic project that um, makes your building more energy efficient or how you connect with residents uh, or your customers to help them be more energy efficient or use renewables or clean energy in any way, shape or form, then we'd love to tell those stories. The first thing we always recommend folks look at is getting an energy audit for your facility. And the, the good news is that there's some really great resources out there to get an energy audit. This is always step one, whether it's a renewable project, whether it's an energy efficiency project, really just get a solid understanding of what the uh, uh, opportunities are out, out there in your facility to, to be more energy efficient. Uh, or to consume less energy. And oftentimes uh, we say, give your utility a call. Um, it really is the first step to getting an energy audit and also to learn about any sort of rebates or incentives that may they may have that you can take advantage of. There are other resources out there as well. I've already mentioned EnerChange um, as a, a great resource to get a free energy audit. Retap. Uh, retired, Envir uh, retired Environmental uh, Technical Assistance Program. It's a, a program through the MPCA. They provide free energy audits as well. So uh, about uh, Interchange, um, as you can see here, they've uh, been around for over 10 years and, and they really focus on nonprofits. That is, that is what they do. They do energy audits and uh, consulting services for nonprofits uh, to be more energy efficient. And boy, you can see from this slide, they've helped a lot of, a lot of different uh, uh, nonprofits across the state in, um, in Excel, <laughs> Excel uh, and Centerpoint Energy Territory. So I've referred many a nonprofit to Interchange and they do not disappoint. They deliver. Um, so I encourage you to, to look at Interchange. And then um, Excel has a, a wonderful program as well where they do whole building energy assessments for nonprofits. And you can see the program eligibility here on the right. They really want to help 501c3s and, and folks that um, help low-income individuals. And uh, so they'll uh, not only do that, that energy assessment, but also some direct installs uh, for your facility. Um, again, provide technical assistance to help you along the way. And then the rebates are, wow, look at that, look at that bullet point. 200% rebate bonuses on energy efficient projects. So, uh, boy, that's pretty pretty tough to turn down when it's a free resource, uh, not only a free resource, but they are uh, willing to cut you a, a pretty sizable check to be more energy efficient. And so you can see the, the contact information for um, moving full steam ahead on the nonprofit energy savings program for those of you that qualify in Excel territory. Let's talk about the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, just to give you a broad overview, this is the biggest, without a doubt, and it's not even close, the biggest climate-related, clean energy-related piece of legislation that's ever passed Congress ever. 300, nearly $370 billion uh, package of investments. Uh, again, the most significant in our history. About $110 billion of that is grants 
um, both uh, competitive grants and formula grants to states, to cities, tribal nations. Um, but the rest of it is in tax credits. And uh, I think the number is around two dozen different tax provisions, tax uh, credit provisions or tax deduction provisions um, that really aim to accelerate the deployment of clean energy, clean vehicles, clean buildings, clean manufacturing, et cetera. So a lot of these incentives um, uh, and you may hear me say this a few times, uh, they're targeted towards low and moderate income individuals. They're targeted uh, towards um, projects that pay prevailing wage and use apprenticeships and meet certain domestic content requirements, made in America requirements. Diving in to some of the details, uh, electric vehicles. Um, so there's been a tax credit for electric vehicles that's been on the books for a while. The Inflation Reduction Act keeps the tax credit for new vehicles at $7,500. Uh, and um, it put, a, put some um, income qualifications uh, and some conditions that you see here on uh, the ability to take advantage of this, this tax credit. Uh, and these, these conditions ramp up um, as the year goes by, as the years go by, the IRA is in place for a decade. Um, so for example, the, the um, battery, battery sourcing requirements get a, more stringent um, as the years go by. The Inflation Reduction Act put in place these income uh, qualifications, put in place these conditions, also made the tax credit available for used vehicles as well, $4,000 tax credit for used vehicles. Uh, just on the commercial side of things, and uh, these are all, both the EVs and the, and the uh, commercial solar incentives are gonna be relevant to nonprofits. So even though I'm talking about um, uh, these things that uh, may apply to residents, for businesses, um, hang in there and they're gonna be relevant for nonprofits as well, including solar incentives. And again, just like that EV tax credit, there's been a solar tax credit or renewable energy tax credit on the books for a while. It was 26%. Um, it was on its way down to 22%, and then on its way down to 10%. The IRA changed that, and uh, it set the tax credit uh, at 30% for the next decade, so brought some stability to that tax credit. And so, um, uh, so this is for... Um, uh, uh, for solar, uh, for for other renewables as well. So I mentioned thirty percent tax credit. Uh, the Inflation Reduction Act also put in place what are called adders, and so it's really a thirty percent minimum tax credit. Uh, but if you do certain things, if it's located in certain areas, that 30% can be increased. Um, so if, for example, you do use um, domestic content for that array, for example, or geothermal project, uh, that 30% that can go to 40%. If it's located in an energy community, and that is defined as uh, if it's located on a brownfield or if it's located in a community with high fossil fuel employment, um, then it could qualify for an additional 10%. Uh, tribal nations uh, or projects that um, benefit low-income residents may qualify for additional adders. So, I mean, if the stars were all aligned, uh, your tax credit um, 
which again was 26% on its way down to 10%, could potentially be 40, 50, 60 uh, percent or more. This applies to energy storage as well. Uh, so it used to be that there was a tax credit for storage, but the storage had to be tied into um, a solar array. That's no longer the case. You can use standalone energy storage um, and qualify for this as well. Let's talk about nonprofits. By golly, how can you, uh, you know, I've been talking about tax credits. You don't pay taxes. Uh, so how can you benefit from electric vehicle tax credits, um, solar tax credits, uh, and renewable energy uh, tax credits as a whole, um, you don't pay taxes, so you don't get the benefit of the tax credit. Well, the Inflation Reduction Act recognized this. The problem beforehand was that if you are a nonprofit or a non-tax paying entity, a city, for example, a school, the food shelf, a, a faith community, you really had to pay full freight um, if you wanted to do uh, one of these projects or enter into uh, uh, like a power purchase agreement um, uh, for a, a solar array. Um, so the Inflation Reduction Act recognized this and created what's called direct pay. It's also called elective pay. You may see uh, both uh, referred to, uh, this referred to as a direct pay or elective pay. They're one and the same. They mean the exact same thing. And this really allows tax exempt entities to take advantage of the, of the tax incentives. And you see the eligible technologies there, solar storage, geothermal, combined heat and power, and electric vehicles. So I mentioned uh, the adders, nonprofits can take advantage of the adders as well. So what does the process look like? How, how exactly does this all work? And this is, this is uh, relatively new information. Um, that the, uh, the feds have rolled out. The Inflation Reduction Act passed in August of 2022, um, 700 page bill, I believe, and lots of information in there. The federal government has been busy rolling out guidance on how all of these different initiatives are gonna work uh, over the past year. And they have released this, uh, process for non-profits uh, to take advantage or non-taxpaying entities to take advantage of the direct pay. And, um, and here it is. Um, it's not too scary of a process, I don't think. Uh, you, uh, you identify that project that you want to pursue. Um, say you want to put on a, um, a 10 kW solar array on your food shelf. Um, you put that project in place in uh, 2024 here. Uh, and so you, you work with a contractor, you get it done, it goes into operation. Um, you determine when your, uh, your tax return will be due. And then in that case, it would be due spring of 2025. Uh, and, um, once the project is complete, you put that 10 kW array on there. Um, uh, then you shortly thereafter complete a pre-filing registration with the IRS. Uh, there's a, a website uh, where you pre-file and submit some, some information there, the size of the array, the cost of the array, or whatever the project might be. Um, and the name of your organization, the uh, key contact, things of that nature. Um, they then look at that, say, yep, you're good to go. They'll give you a, a registration number, um, a registration number for each qualifying project. So if you did a geothermal project and a solar array, then you would have two registration numbers. 
uh, and then you complete a, a 990T um, tax form when your taxes, uh, when, uh, um, uh, when you file your taxes in the spring and, uh, and then uh, give them a bit of time um, and you'll receive a direct payment for, again, for 30%, uh, if it's a if it's a solar array, a geothermal project, um, thirty percent of the minimum plus those adders, uh, and uh, um, and then uh, electric vehicles as well, seven thousand five hundred dollars maximum for a new a new vehicle. So that's. A bit about the process. They just rolled out the, this pre-registration, this pre-filing registration website, maybe um, two weeks ago or so. Uh, so that's still still brand new. All right. So we should back up just a second. Like, who exactly can take advantage of direct pay? Um, and here we have those uh, those entities. Um, a frequently asked question for me is, well, gosh, do I have to be a 501c3 nonprofit to, to take advantage of it? No, you don't. It's great if you are, you don't have to be. You could be a faith community. Um, and then they, they put in um, this kind of catch-all term of all other exempt organizations. So it's pretty clear if you're a city, county, school, you qualify. Uh, if you're a tribal nation, you qualify. If you're a, a rural electric cooperative, you qualify. Um, but really, I, 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 I'm confident in saying that all uh, uh, tax-exempt organizations qualify for this benefit, this direct pay or elective pay benefit as well. I get this question too. Well, gosh, you know, I'm a nonprofit and I I want to put in that 10 kW solar array. I received um, I received a grant from um, my local community foundation to help with this. Uh, uh, can I can I qualify? Um, uh, can I still get the direct payment? And the good news is. Absolutely, 110%. So uh, it's a, it works a little bit differently. Um, let's just say uh, to keep the, the math s simple here, um, say it's uh, uh, say it's a, a 10,000, say it's a $100,000 project, the cost of the, we'll say a solar project. Hundred thousand dollar project. Um, the the uh, it's so you would qualify for thirty percent minimum thirty percent or thirty thousand dollar direct payment. Uh, but what if you uh, and the feds will pay up to the cost of the project. So that means if you get a grant from that community foundation for eighty thousand dollars. You would qualify again that if for eighty thousand dollars for a hundred thousand dollar project. Again, you would qualify for thirty thousand dollars. The feds will pay in this case up to the cost of the project. So you get eighty thousand. The feds will give you a direct payment for twenty thousand dollars. So you can't make money out of, out of the deal, uh, but they will they will make you whole essentially. Talk, uh, uh, talking about energy efficiency, which we always encourage folks to be as energy efficient as possible, even before they do uh, a solar project, for example. Um, this uh, this uh, 179D, the energy efficient commercial buildings deduction, it's not a, a credit, it's a deduction, has been on the books for a while. It's it's changed its look and feel um, over the years, but 
it's probably been on the books since uh, 2006 is when is when it was created. And the program's intent is really to drive commercial building owners and designers of tax exempt uh, buildings to reduce their energy use by rewarding the implementation of energy efficient building components for new construction or for major renovations. Um, so prior to the IRA, uh, a commercial building owner could get a tax deduction of a buck 88 per square foot. Uh, if and only if the project achieved uh, a 50% energy savings um, or the new construction was 50% more energy efficient than a, a standard energy benchmark. It was a, it's a high threshold. It was a high threshold to achieve 50% energy savings or 50% um, uh, more energy efficient than this energy benchmark. Um, the IRA lowered the benchmark, uh, lowered the required energy savings from 50% to 25% and set a sliding scale for the amount of the deduction. Um, and, uh, and, they, and they increased um, the per square foot incentive from a buck 88 up to potentially $5 per square foot. And, and so again, tax, uh, uh, nonprofits, you don't pay taxes. So tax deduction, how's that going to benefit you? The way that you can tap into that is you can allocate that tax deduction to the contractor or to the architect or to the engineer that you're working with, and they can take the tax deduction. And the benefit of that is that um, it's really a, a negotiating point at the start of the project. Um, so you can say, hey, uh, this is going to cost me a million dollars. This is a million dollar project. Um, I'm going to get a XYZ tax deduction that I can allocate to you, architect, engineer, contractor. Um, let's negotiate on the total cost of the project. So it can be a it can be a sizable tax deduction um, that that they would they would they will want to have, um, and they're familiar with it. Like I said, it's been on the books for uh, twenty years or so. So it's um, it's uh, it's not going to be brand new information for them. Um, but you'll want to work with your um, tax advisors to. Uh, to make sure you're informed. And again, it's really the most beneficial at the very start um, of the project. I also want to uh, mention a tool. So gosh, you, you're, you're going to get the direct payment. You're familiar with that. Uh, um, say for this um, solar project that you want to put on your nonprofit, but um, that's a 30% direct payment. That's amazing, brand new. Uh, that really helps lower the burden. Um, but still, you got to come up with the 70%. And uh, I want to mention one tool or a few tools for you to think about um, to make up that difference. And one is called Property Assess Clean Energy or PACE Financing. It's a way for businesses or nonprofits to uh, to pay for a renewable energy project or an energy efficiency project and pay it off. It's a loan, it's not a grant, it's a loan. Pay it off as an assessment on your property tax bill. And again, I, I know nonprofits, you don't pay property taxes, but you do pay assessments, like a street assessment. It works the exact same way. Um, so you would get a bill twice a year uh, and um, it would say property taxes due, zero, assessment, $1,000, whatever it might be. Um, it's uh, typically the term is 10 years and the interest rate uh, right now is right around 5%.
the project process for a PACE loan, first of all, that local government um, who collects the taxes has to put it in place. And I think uh, we go by counties. So about two thirds of the counties in Minnesota have PACE already in place. Don't let that hold you down. If, um, if it's not in place, the best way to get it in operation is to have a project um, that wants to use PACE. Um, and uh, we have a map on our website that shows the eligible areas. Um, the loan actually comes from, in most cases, the St. Paul Port Authority, wherever you are in Minnesota. And uh, they have a pretty simple application on the St. Paul Port Authority's website. You submit that, um, they take a look at it, uh, they give you the thumbs up, um, it's 100% financing. And then you, you typically uh, uh, use the savings through that energy efficiency project or renewable project to help pay back the loan. And it's real predictable. You know, it's it's a, uh, uh, a, a, a flat interest rate. It doesn't uh, uh, go up or down. Uh, and again, the term is typically 10 years. There's been several um, nonprofits that have used PACE financing. Uh, here's just a, a sample of, uh, of those projects. Uh, Barn Theater, American Indian Family Center, YMCA in St. Paul, uh, Tubman Center. And, um, and just uh, focusing on the Tubman Center for a second, they put in uh, uh, two 40 kW solar arrays. You may be familiar with the Tubman Center. They, they help uh, families struggling with relationship violence and substance abuse, mental health, a wonderful organization. I believe they have three different facilities um, in the Twin Cities. And, uh, and so they did both an energy efficiency project. They put in new building control systems, uh, new highly energy efficient lighting, and these two solar projects received a PACE financing loan uh, for 423,000. The interest rate at that time was 4% and, uh, and tapped into some incentives from their utility, Excel in this case, um, to help uh, pay for the project as well. Um, they should say other funds or other funding uh, uh, resources, um, uh, USDA has a community facilities, a grant and loan program that nonprofits are eligible for. Um, CDFIs, Community Development uh, Financing, uh, there's about 30 of them. Um, and I'll uh, send out this, um, uh, this slide deck uh, for this uh, great article about CDFIs. And then um, last but not least, I wanna mention CERT seed grants as well. Um, we give out uh, uh, grants that are about, oh, in the range of two to $10,000 or so. Uh, we just, we, the latest grant uh, round just wrapped up, um, but uh, we help fund nonprofits uh, that are really doing great work out there along with other sort of community groups uh, for energy efficiency projects, renewable energy projects um, that uh, are really, um, beacons across the community, ways that they can help uh, uh, shed, the li shed light on um, uh, these types of projects. Uh, and there they are, there's a, better, there's a better slide for that. Um, and these are the resources when I'm looking about, uh, looking for more information about the Inflation Reduction Act and about direct pay and what it's all about and how it all works. These are some of the resources that I go to, um, a database of state incentives for renewables and efficiency. Rewiring America is a, a great organization. They have a calculator on their website. So if you're working with a client or customer um, and uh, uh, you want to know um, how much they will save if uh, uh, they get an air source heat pump, for example, 
uh, Rewiring America is a, it's a great resource for that, as well as these other resources. That's me. Um, so please contact me anytime. Uh, there's my contact information. And um, I'm happy to be a resource for you as you go through your your journey of being more energy efficient and tapping into direct pay and tapping into all of these different amazing resources. Um, I will stop sharing my screen and turn it over to Kristen. All right, let me see if I can accomplish sharing my screen here. All right, can everyone see it? Cool, all right, well, thank you for giving me some time today to go over um, a couple of programs that we administer that may be of interest to the folks on this um, call today. So I'll give some high level information on the One Stop Efficiency Shop and the um, Excel Energy Business Energy Assessment Program that we administer. And again, my name is Kristen Funk and I'm with the Center for Energy and Environment. Um, we are also a nonprofit who've uh, been doing work in uh, Minnesota. We have got to be 40 plus years already in different incarnations. Um, this is our mission statement. So I'll give you a few seconds to look at that um, and some of the core values that we stand for. Foundationally, um, we administer, develop programs. We do consulting, policy, research. We have a lending team, and we've also recently started a market transformation team. Um, but today, as I mentioned, I'm mainly going to talk about a couple of programs um, that we run that nonprofits are eligible for. So the first one is the One Stop Efficiency Shop. Um, we're going on 24 years with this program. Um, this year, we started in 2000, and we've added some things along the way. We started off mainly as a lighting program, but we've since added HVAC and refrigeration. So we offer free service or free full service consulting for all of those end uses um, and rebates, mainly for small to mid-sized commercial businesses that are in Excel Energy territory. And we have a team of lighting consultants and support staff. Um, that run this program day to day. And basically our consultants are the ones that are out in the field coming out to um, businesses and doing assessments there and putting together all of the recommendations and then support staff help behind the scenes. Um, and what they do is extremely important just to make sure everything's coordinated, completed and turned into Excel so we can get the rebates sent out for everybody. So what does One Stop entail? Basically what we offer is a free lighting, HVAC and or refrigeration assessment. We also offer free smart thermostat installations, which is relatively new. We've been doing that for a couple of years now. And as part of our assessment, we provide a report that has all of our recommendations, estimated project costs, payback, rebates, savings, et cetera. Basically all the information you need to know about your project to make an informed decision. We offer rebates up to 60% of project costs, and we also have access to low interest financing through our internal lending team that I mentioned earlier. And we also try to provide as much support as you need throughout the process. So if you need assistance reviewing bids or finding qualified contractors, we can help you out with that. Um, we also provide project support and technical guidance. So if there are any questions about what the recommendations are, we can help sort through that with you and just make sure um, you're getting the best upgrades um, for your money and that everybody's on the same page with the project. And then finally, we complete all of the program and rebate paperwork. So that's not something that you have to be burdened with or your contractor has to be burdened with as far as that goes. This is who we serve. As I mentioned at the top, we serve small to medium-sized businesses um, in Excel Energy Minnesota service territory. So this is a map of Excel's electric territory um, in Minnesota. We can pretty much serve 
the gamut of commercial account types from for-profit to nonprofits such as yourselves, multifamily, schools, municipal, et cetera. To qualify for our program, you do have to have a peak demand of 400 KW or less, and that's something that we can help you determine. Um, I wouldn't recommend trying to figure that out on your own because utility bills are notoriously hard to interpret. So um, definitely something you can check with us on. And we coordinate with Excel on that front. So we have a list of accounts that are eligible for our program that we can cross check um, your account against to make sure you're el eligible. And then we can work with buildings that are owned by one owner as well as different tenant spaces. This is just a quick snapshot of who we've served over time, just some high level data on the program. As I mentioned, we're getting close to 25 years of service with this program. So we've served a lot of businesses over 20,000 over the years and saved people a lot of energy, over $110 million in rebates awarded. And as I mentioned, now we're adding smart stats to our portfolio. And so far we've installed over 3000 stats in qualified businesses. So a little deeper dive on the smart stat program. Um, free smart stats are available to anyone who is eligible for one stop in general. Um, the thermostats and installation are free of charge and installed by our staff on site. As part of this, you are enrolled in Excel Energy's AC Rewards program, and you do receive annual bill credits for each thermostat that you install. At this time, there is no limit on the number of thermostats that can be installed in a building. And one of the benefits of installing a smart stat is that building staff or maintenance staff gain the ability to monitor and adjust multiple stats remotely from one device. So that's kind of nice, especially if you have multiple stats in the building that you need to worry about people um, kind of going to war over what the temperature um, should be. So, um, and then we also offer some loans, as I mentioned earlier. So this is just a quick snapshot of what's available. Um, everyone on this call will probably be more interested in the second bullet, po bullet point, which is a nonprofit loan. We have rates starting at 2% right now, and we can offer loans up to $25,000 with terms up to seven years. And um, the nonprofit does have to be a 501c3 to qualify for um, the nonprofit loan. If you're not, you could take advantage of our regular business loan, which is up top um, rates starting at 3.75 with amounts up to 100,000 for 10 year terms. And again, this is all done within CEE. So it's kind of a one stop program where we can plug you in to the financing as well as part of the project, if that would be something that you're interested in. This is just a short case study um, that we did for ARC's Value Village. Um, so this is a lighting case study. They were having some problems with lamp and ballast burnouts in their store. And um, in a retail environment, lighting is obviously very important to make sure that the product is being um, shown in the right way. And they were having a lot of, due to the burnouts, they were having a lot of additional maintenance costs, um, mismatched lighting that was put in, um, and their circuits were at capacity. So we were able to come in and do an assessment and put together some recommendations that ultimately reduce their maintenance costs, um, improve their lighting quality and overall customer experience and reduce their overall energy load. And we were able to bring to the table as part of that, um, our low interest financing, some grants that we have in Richfield. And on this particular project, we collaborated with Interchange as well. So I should just say, um, that um, we do often collaborate with some of the other groups that were mentioned already on this call, like Interchange and Energy Smart, um, to work together to get this done. So that's often a very nice partnership. And then this is just the high level savings that they were able to achieve about $22,000 in savings annually. They received about $32,000 in rebate. And then you see the KWH savings that they achieved and the payback was about 1.4 years. So this project made a lot of sense for them and just helped them improve their overall experience for their customers. 
And then I do have one slide on the business, business energy assessments. Um, full disclosure, this is not a program that I run. So um, I just wanted to get some high level information out there on it. And you can certainly contact me and I can plug you into the right people on our end if you want more details on it. But this program is designed more for higher users. So as I mentioned, One Stop is targeted at small, medium-sized businesses. Um, this would be for larger energy users and it's an engineer-led assessment that's equivalent to an ASHRAE level two audit. So again, it's a whole building assessment and it's performed by our engineers at CE. Um, it's for Excel Energy Minnesota commercial customers, as I mentioned, with large facilities. And you receive about a $15,000 value with the audit that we deliver. And this is just some general cost information. Um, the assessment isn't free in this case, but generally speaking, it's about $1,500 for a 100 to 300,000 square foot building and about $2,200 for a 300,000 square foot building or more. Um, so that's what I have on that program. Over to the right, you can see some of the services that come with this. You get a detailed equipment survey, um, along with energy efficiency recommendations, a return on investment analysis, as well as rebate and implementation assistance from our staff. Um, so again, if this is a program, if you're a larger user, um, please feel free to contact me and I'd be happy to get you in touch with the folks on our end that run this program and can provide more detail. And as far as One Stop is concerned, I do oversee that program. So um, if you'd like any more information on that, feel free to reach out and I'd be happy to help you out with that. So thanks again for the time. Thank you, Kristen. That's great information. While, I, while we have you on here, uh, there's a question in the chat um, uh, which is about mul the multifamily, uh, a multifamily, uh, just, uh, it just disappeared on my screen. Um, if a multifamily cooperative has had an energy audit done by Interchain, Interchange and Excel's um, MFBE program, is there anything additional that can be gained by using CEE for an energy audit? Um, I think if you've already run or signed up for the MFBE program, it probably makes sense to stick with that program. I don't know that there's anything additional we're gonna be able to offer there, so. We've had an active chat going here. So, uh, uh, Anna, am I missing other questions? Well, there's one um, one back, back for you, uh, Kristen. Are there any case studies you could share of local governments that have utilized the one-stop shop? Yeah, I think we could. Um, I'll have to go back and check with our marketing team and see what our portfolio case studies looks like. But um, we can certainly um, pull one together um, if we don't have one, if that's useful for folks. So I can make a note to do that. And um, yeah, if somebody can send me the person I need to get in touch with on that, that would be great. And I'd be happy to follow up on that. So. Excellent. And then there is one question in the Q and A, um, a question on pre-registering for direct pay. Peter mentioned that the project must be completed prior to registering. What is pre-registering and is it recommended or required? Uh, pre to get the direct payment, you must pre-register. And by doing that, you will, you will get a project identification number that you include in that 990T filing. So yes, that is a requirement. Another question popped up. Are there case studies of churches using IRA and PACE? Uh, there are uh, 
several uh, faith communities that have used property assessed clean energy. Uh, because the uh, direct payment is so new, um, the, like I mentioned, the process for pre-registration has just opened up um, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we don't have uh, case studies on that yet, but um, yeah, you can you can use PACE, you can use Direct Pay, uh, and these other resources together. And we will sure will have case studies when uh, once once they've gone through the process. Hey, thank and maybe you. your one of your organizations could be the case study. Let us know. Um, there's a follow-up question on the pre-registration. Do you pre-register before completing the project? You uh, pre-register after the project is complete. I think you want to, I think you want a solid understanding of uh, the cost of the project, you know, just in case there's some change orders or, you know, things don't line up exactly like the, the bid or the quote. Um, uh, so it's, it's after it's completed. Those are all of the questions I see. Micah Johnson, thank you for the testimony on property assessed clean energy. You say it's uh, well worth it. It's a good thing. That's great. And thanks for the link to the IRS user guide. Great. We'll be sure to include uh, uh, these uh, slides and uh, uh, resources in uh, our follow up. If there's nothing else, gosh, thanks everybody. Uh, really appreciate it. And again, thank you, City of St. Paul. Great job, uh, really appreciate it. And uh, all of our other partners, CEE, you guys continue to amaze, doing great work. And um, uh, all of you nonprofits out there, non-tax paying entities, thank you for the work that you do for making our communities so much better. Appreciate it. Yes, thank you, and thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.